I, I wonder if we can just sort of zoom into the that that moment when you decided that you're gonna get over the cringe and make that YouTube video and make that TikTok. What what was that experience like? Yeah, do you know it, it was okay. I I hated the sound of my own voice. So when I would sort of listen back to them and stuff, um, some of them I just sort of handed over to my husband Matt and said, just press the button and <laughs> I'll sort of look this way. And then you know just didn't ever want to see it again. And probably probably that's one of my methods actually is just don't watch it back too mm. much because then you just become critical and you want to make the perfect video and actually it's better off just saying I, I know it's not perfect I might not look or sound perfect but it's a useful message so put it out there just in case and then what you do is you get back these messages from people saying well thank you that really changed my day or I'm using this with my son or daughter and it's really helping thank you and then you think well yeah it's okay to put a non-perfect video out there yeah. if you're being valuable to someone so that's sort of allowed me to um, be imperfect. Yeah. yeah. And I, the, that, that kind of reminds me of the stuff you talk about in motivation in, in the book. I think it's maybe chapter two, where you say that it's really about like those small steps and getting that feedback and then that sustains the motivation. Yeah. It was that, I guess that kind of played into what kept you going in the early days. Yeah. And, and in the book, I talk about that sort of need for intrinsic motivation. You know, that sort of, we don't need, uh, you know, uh, they always give stickers to kids now, don't they, at schools mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Uh, you know, we don't need a sticker or a trophy along the way. We need uh, something inside of us that says, yes, you're on the right track. You're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was, it was that feeling that I get from feedback from real people saying, I used it and it was helpful to me. Thank you. Um, and then there's that realization of, you know, I can sit in one room with one person at a time and try and be helpful. But when you can get, you know, 100 messages back in a day that say, thank you, that was really helpful, then, wow, you know, what an opportunity to reach all those people. Were you worried at all about your professional standing <laughs> when yes. you started? But like, yeah, oh. what, what was that like? This is the thing that all doctors worry about as well. So yes. I, I, I guess it's the same. Yeah, it's something I can ask you yeah. as well, actually, because that was probably the main thing in my mind was, oh, what if someone I used to work with sees this and what will they think of me and and, and that sort of thing. And, and, you know, somehow I managed to just do it anyway but um and actually the feedback i've got from from old colleagues and staff has been really positive you know of sort of colleagues who are um you know gps and stuff like that who say that they you know mention the channel when people are struggling and i think gosh that that's that's the compliment you want isn't it is when people are willing to share your stuff because they see it as valuable too so yeah. um that's a sort of seal of approval but there is just this moment of almost free fall isn't it where you think ah i'm gonna do it anyway and see what happens yeah. and risk disapproval um but i think i always had to stick to that sense that um, i'm doing it because i believe this could be a useful thing for people yeah. um i know there's this stuff that people could have access to and mm. um and we could make it valuable for people so i had to just sort of stick to my guns try and maintain a sense of credibility all the way along and um not just say anything you know do my research and make sure that things were grounded and um an evidence base and stuff like that so so that i believed in it yeah i think that's that's really it's it's sort of like um the whole simon sinek stuff the whole start start with why thing like when when you have that core why behind what you're doing it's not that you're trying to get famous it's not that you're trying to become a tiktok celebrity it's that you're trying to educate people on something that's genuinely useful yeah i guess that is uh, you know that's the intrinsic motivation rather than the extrinsic oh i want to hit a million followers and, and stuff like that yeah and it's it's difficult because it it grabs you doesn't it? and then these platforms are made to be um addictive for creators as well as mm. uh, users so yeah. there is a sense of oh how many views did we get there or how many views did we get, did we get there but always being able to pull it back to why did i make that video and and actually i've noticed that if i make a video that i'm particularly pleased with because it's, it's valuable information i want to share I care a bit less about how many views it gets because mm -hmm. I think if I if that video helps ten people um, but only gets seen by you know ten thousand then that's that's worth it for me. But if if another video I make is not so valuable but I'm doing it to try and get views, then it's got less of a reward for me if I um, you know if I start to go down that road. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly the same on the YouTube video thing. Like um, every creator I've ever spoken to has this constant struggle between caring about the numbers while simultaneously not caring about the numbers. <laughs> how, yeah. how do you, how do you tell that line? <laughs> I just think it's a tightrope, isn't it? And yeah. you always have to just um, do a bit of a, a sort of mental check-in every now and then. Cause I can tell if I start to go down that road, I mean, my husband is really that kind of side of it. So he'll look at numbers and say, oh, this didn't do well or that did well and things like that. But I feel that if I get um, too into that, 
then it's not good because it, it yeah. really stumps creativity and my ability to to think from from the word go about what am I going to put together mm. to make a video with. Um, you know, if I'm only thinking about views. Um, it's just so much harder to do the whole thing. Yeah. Hey friends, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this clip, then click here for the full unedited episode. And if you like that, then do please consider subscribing to the channel. It means a lot. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.